Ah, there it is. Okay. Let's have a watch this and I will be right. ...who complain about having zero sex have no idea how the female sex drive actually works and the complaining makes it much worse. <laughs> My favorite thing is when couples come in and they haven't had sex in a year and I ask why and she looks at him and says, because he hasn't asked. And he says, well, I kind of hinted and you just never seemed interested. And she says, well, when was the last time you spent time with me? Well, why would I spend time with you if you're not having sex with me? And that right there is exactly the spiral. Women, after one year, their sex drive switches from bonding with you mode to long-term stability and mate retention. If you have given her the adequate emotional bonding, and if she has decent enough, secure enough attachment to receive that bonding, her sex drive will go way up because her brain says, keep this man around and have as many of his babies as I can. We must have 15 babies in the next week. That's what her brain will say. And I've seen couples, I've worked with couples in their 60s who come in, and sorry for this mental image, but they come in having very little sex and they leave after a few sessions having sex three or four or five times a week in their 60s because... They improve their actual emotional intimacy, which leads to better non-sexual physical intimacy, which then leads overwhelmingly to sexual physical intimacy. It should begin in your emotional bonding and connection. It will drive her sex drive through the roof, and she will not only be receptive to you, she will be chasing you through the house. God, you love this. You got to love this, like, enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah, you had another tweet that said at about six to 12 months into a relationship the female sex drive switches from attraction and bonding to long-term stability that means emotional intimacy trust and predictability mm -hmm. many couples lack these three things so her sex drive tanks neither person fully gets why no they do get why eventually they get why when when we're talking about um like couples who lose like sexual attraction i i love how these are the same dudes who pop off about um who only want to talk about like sexual or they want only want to talk about the beta buck side of hypergamy and they don't want to you you want to know hey, like i said here before the secrets to the title of today's show the secrets to a great marriage here's the secrets to a great marriage urgency competition anxiety dread uh provoking an anxiety I, I pick up people give me so much shit for when I said this before is I some of the best sex you'll have you're married the best sex you will ever have as a married couple will be when you're when you're having makeup sex when you thought you were going to break up when you thought you're going to file divorce papers when you thought you were going to when you thought it was over and it's not over and you get back and you fuck like you fucked when you were single it's because there's an urgency there there's a there's a fear of loss there's that desire walk. Uh, was it? I had, um, I've had people on, uh, women on Access Vegas who will, who will hit me up and they'll say, Rolo, I have a new appreciation for my husband because we did the, um, we did the, uh, or I did, she, she would do, the woman would do the, uh, the delusion calculator. And so she would go, okay, I'm going to type all my, my, my husband's stats into the delusion calculator and see how rare an animal he is. And women realize, and they, remember, this is pretty like basic shit too, okay? It's just like CDC and uh, and Census Bureau information. So he's how tall, he's uh, how old, he's uh, have paid X amount of dollars. Um, you know, is he obese? Is he not obese? Whatever, is he black? Is he white? Is he not, you know, no, no race whatsoever? You put, just type in those basic like criterion for, um, for the delusion calculator and it comes back and women realize, Oh my God, I'm with a guy who is 0.007124% of the population. Does that prompt them to want to fuck the guy that much more? I can't say for sure it does, but if it doesn't, it's because everything that he is, is mundane to her and she hasn't been put into a position of like scarcity. She hasn't been put into the position of almost losing that guy and then realizing how fucked she'd be if she did lose that guy. Now, monetarily, she might be able to say, well, I can take it for half of his shit, right? If he divorces me, fine. I don't care. I'll take all his money. That's all I care about. Mm, no, not necessarily. Because it still pushes, it still forces her back into the sexual marketplace. And I wonder, and I, it, these are like really unpopular like considerations, I think, because you're never going to see people really do like, you're not going to see Alex from Date Psych do stats on whether or not women regret divorcing their husbands. You never see those. Those stats are really hard to come by. Oh, I shouldn't have divorced him. You know, 
because now I'm fat and I'm 40 and I can't find another man, but at least I got half his shit. So was it worth it? Cheaper to keep him maybe <laughs> in that situation. But what gets me is these are the same, these are the same guys who, if I, if I'm talking about alpha fucks and beta bucks, if I'm talking about short-term sexual benefits versus long-term security benefits, they run me up the fucking flagpole. They just read me the riot act, but here they are talking about it. And the problem with most of these guys is they're the same motherfuckers that want to talk about how important the only consideration is long-term security, provisioning, protection, and parental investment. Like that's the only reason women would ever want to get with a guy is because he was, he, he represents uh security and, and everything. And it's like, no, that's not why women get with guys in the first place. They get you get with you because it's not safe. They want to fuck. They want to fuck the, the Tinder swindler. They want to fuck Christian gray for 50 shades of gray. They want to fuck the rock band drummer or guitar player, <laughs> the lead singer. They want to, they, they want danger. They want, they want the roller coaster. They want to know that the roller coaster is safe. And that right before it flies off the track, somebody's there, usually a guy, to make sure that it stays on the track, but they still want the thrill of the roller coaster. They still want to know that they're going to be safe, even though they're about to, you know, the car's about to go careening off the side of the fucking freeway. And, and the, 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 the parachute deploys right at the last minute. <laughs> they want to know it's all safe. But yet they still want the they still want the thrill of thinking that it's not safe. And you say, well, that that applies to men too. Yeah, it does in, in other in another context, but we're talking about intersexual dynamics and how women's nature is. So that's the alpha fucks side of things. It's alpha fucks and beta bucks. Beta bucks is the is the training wheels. Beta bucks is the the security, the knowing that it that the roller coaster is actually safe and it's not going to fly off the track. But the alpha fuck side is that man, I love going on a roller coaster because it goes up and down and up and down and everything else. And I know at the end of the roller coaster, I'm going to get off and go, oh man, what a great ride. <laughs> So many women that I work with do not understand how their own sex drive works. I, ha I, I have clients who come in and they say, Adam, I don't know why I don't have a high sex drive. I just feel like my husband is mad at me for not having sex with her, but I just kind of don't want to. Okay. Yeah. No, they understand fully, Adam. They understand exactly how it works. You know how I know? Because none of them are big fans of the DC comic book character Aquaman, but they all want to see the Aquaman movie. <laughs> You know, that none of them have ever heard of Fifty Shades of Grey because it was a self-published book. But somehow 65 million copies of that were sold by the end of that year. Why is that so popular? I don't know. It's be, well, it must be because Christian Grey was a um, was such a an upstanding gentleman of society. And he was taking care of his kids and his wife. And, and, and you know, really had a long term plan and wanted to get married to what a no name chick. Why was Twilight, so, because it's basically the same thing, why, why was Twilight so popular? They understand their own sexuality. Trust me on this. They're just not getting it. They, they sacrificed sexual urgency, dread, competition anxiety, the roller coaster ride for a safe SUV. For a guy who's seen, oh, I love dad bods. Get the fuck out of here. No woman likes dad bods, period. In fact, that, I don't think there has been a more insulting, offensive, offensive <laughs> meme since dad bods. Trust me on this one. What calendar sells more? The Chippendales calendar or the dad bods calendar? Which one do you, which one do you think women want to have up on their, I don't know, cubicle wall? <laughs> which one? Which one sells mo more? The dad bods? Because you would think that by, by, you know, order degree that the, the dad bods calendar will be the one that was everybody loved because everybody says they love dad bods. Get the fuck out of here. So you kind of have to, you got to remember that you're never going to get a straight answer because it's not in women's best interests to give you a straight answer about their knowing or not knowing about their own sexuality. In fact, if anything, it makes better sense for married women who aren't their husbands to say, I don't know, we must have mismatched libidos. No, you don't. You just don't want to fuck him because he's not fun. He's not exciting. He's not dangerous. He's not a roller coaster. He's not Jack Reacher. He's not Justin Waller and he's not Jason Momoa. And 
God knows. Hey, can somebody give me some better guys to fucking throw. Was it uh, Chris Evans? <laughs> he's not those guys. He's not, he's not thunder from down under. And when all you've had is safe, you know, chubby daddy who's comfy and familiar and he's, he's like part of the family. There's, there's a concept. And I think it was Dr. Warren Farrell who said this back in the day is that the reason why women don't want to their husbands later on is because the guy goes from boyfriend, fun rock band boyfriend to dad and father and husband because dad, father and husband are family rock band, drummer, rock band, ba nobody fucks bass players. Anybody <laughs> rock band, guitar player, that guy gets that guy fucks. Those are guys that fuck. They've gone from the guy that fucks to the guy that doesn't fuck. Or he might have been the guy that fucked and he turned into the guy that didn't fuck. And in the meantime, and in the process, he became dad. Dad is family. Husband is family. And there's a, and this is, again, I'm not saying this is right or wrong, but this was Dr. Warren Farrell's theory is that that familiarity means something like incest. Like you don't want to fuck your dad. You don't want to fuck your brothers. You don't want to fuck anybody in your family because now they're family. So the guy who used to be the hot fun guy you wanted to have, you know, hot in the back of your car with after the club, after the show was over, that guy's dad. Now that guy is pop. That guy is Dottie. That guy is, you know, is now family. You don't fuck family. You don't get turned on by family unless that guy really made, I'll tell you one of the reasons you want to know one of the reasons. Well, I'd say the main reason why wives don't want to fuck their husbands is because they cease to be dangerous. Women like danger. They want a guy dangerous man. That's, I mean, we can talk about high burst of till they're blue in the face, but it doesn't have to be that extreme. They want a guy who they they're walking on eggshells with. And I don't mean that in the sense like it's, Oh my God, you like, they're psychotic about it. I'm just mean that in the fact that they're, they respect that guy. And I think that when, as I said before, women's form of respect and men's form of respect are completely different. But in this case, in men's form of respect, it's he is the guy that other men want to be and other women want to. Now, you can be the man that other men want to be, but you can still be the guy that other women just don't want to fuck. Like you told me, okay, he's dad, you know, he's, he's out there mowing the lawn. He's got a belly, right? took his shirt off. Why did you do, why would you do that? Why would you subject the neighborhood to that? <laughs> we want to see Chris Evans chopping wood with no shirt on, not you walking around the neighborhood with a beer in your hand and you know, your pop belly sticking out and you're mowing the lawn. No, no, but no, no woman wants to fuck that. Even if you could be, you could be in charge of multi-million dollar company and be the guy that other men want to be, but no other woman wants to fuck you. Or you could be the kind of guy that other women definitely want to fuck all the time, but no other man wants to be like that. That combination exists too. Usually it's drug dealers and gang members. And it's like, yeah, women want to fuck him. But like guys are like, if I want to be that guy. So uh, the, that common, those combinations actually exist too. But the reason why women don't want to fuck their husbands is simply because he's not dangerous anymore. He's familiar. When they say familiarity breeds contempt, there it is. That's all you got to do. Trust me, Adam, they understand their sexuality. The one guys. Okay. This is just a question for guys right now. This is addressed to the, to the gentleman right now. I don't know if you have a friend or maybe you've experienced this yourself, but like, if you've ever gone through a divorce, if you've ever gone through a, 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 a breakup even, and you're with your wife or you're with your girl or whatever, I've, I've written essays about this in the past, but uh, you're with a woman who won't do certain things in bed with you. I don't know, She doesn't want gobble the goo or she won't like, you know, do, do reverse cowboy or cowgirl, or whatever. She won't do those things because she just, ah, she's just self-conscious. Oh, I don't want to get that stuff on me. Ew. You want me to do what? And then as soon as she's out of the relationship and as soon as she's divorced, she is doing all that in like a bag of chips, man. She does everything. Because you weren't the guy that would bring that out. You were like, I can't believe my wife would want to do something like this. I can't believe she had this in her. I can't. Well, how come she wouldn't do it with me? Because you're you. That's why. I have seen this in the reverse uh, in the past where like guys have found like old like video. This is back in the day. Old videotapes of their girlfriend like having sex with like guys who are in their college years. Right. 
and they've done like three ways or four ways with their their college friends and they videotaped it if you know doing like amateur or something like that and then there are you know poor husband who she will only have missionary sex with if she has sex with him at all now he's wondering well gee i married a slut who fucks like a prude well she makes up this bullshit about like well i've changed and i'm not like that anymore and blah 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 and it's like no you just don't want to do that you you did that with somebody else who's not your husband who's not me how come i how come those guys brought that out in you and i can't seem to bring that out in you that's the difference between that's exactly what this guy's talking about right here it's not mismatched libidos there's no such thing as mismatched libidos oh i have a higher sex drive and it, trust me men have a higher sex drive than their what across the fucking board you don't believe me i can show you the stats for it across the board husbands always want to have sex more than their wives do and that's not to say that women don't want to have sex with their husbands they do but i'm saying that on average Men want to fuck their wives more than wives want to fuck their husbands. Just simple. That's by this simple biology, right? So what, what turn, you know, I've, I've said that every woman's a, but she, you just have to be the guy to bring it out in her. Not many guys know how to bring that out in her. The easiest way I'll tell you, what's funny is when I have done uh, what I've called the reconstruction. If you've read my third book, positive masculinity, there are four chapters in there. And that's the, the, what I call the reconstruction chapters. And I wrote that those sections in there to address exactly what this guy's talking about right here is that pull this guy out is to understand like how to like guys, most guys don't want to divorce their wives. They don't want to, they want to have a great relationship, right? You have a secret to a great marriage, right? They don't want to divorce their wife. They're in love with their wives. That's why when they have, they have a real tough time with the red pill, like guys who've been married for a long time and they're in sexless marriages, they're like, I don't I don't want to divorce her. I don't want to get out. I'm going to lose a lot of money or, but it's not even so much losing money or half their shit. They're still in love with their wives. It's just wives don't want to fuck them and they want to get off and they want to do something. And then you've got like guys who like, they'll get addicted to, or like I've said before, pornography has extended has prolonged more marriages than it has ever destroyed. Because it's the it's the fail safe. It's the it's the release valve for guys who aren't getting laid. Well, it's destroyed them because these they have a it's because he's off. That's why she doesn't want to fuck. No, no, no. He resorts to porn because the real thing is not forthcoming. You talk about, you know what? Let me uh, let me you really want me to, to fuck up your program right now? I will tell you this right now. Pornography, especially for Christian guys, right? Or religious guys and general believers in general. Um, you want to know why it fucks up guys so much in a religious context, pornography. It's not because it's the, it's not even the release, not even the sexual release. It's not because, oh, it gives them unrealistic expectations. Well, it shouldn't, it shouldn't give you unrealistic sex expectations. Your wife should want to do triple monkey backflips on you in the bedroom, right? Sorry, CGA. She should want to have hot. She should want to do all those things that you see in the, in the movies. Like she should be coming up with shit. She should be going, you know what? I'm going to try reverse cowgirl tonight. I want to try it this way. I want to go and I don't know. Let's go get the Kama Sutra and figure shit out. She should be imagining ways to. There should be, she should be creative. She should be a fucking sex artist. She should want to fuck you with such abandon and such like complete, like lack of self consciousness. That like you are the one for I want your babies and you know what I want to make sure that I'm on a trapeze when I'm hat when you're me with your babies. I want to make sure that it is the most memorable experience of your fucking life. That's what a wife should do for a husband. And you know what doesn't happen. That woman is doing it with the hot guy in the foam cannon party in Cancun on spring break. She was drunk. He was cute. And one thing led to another that and didn't have to didn't have to make sure that the sheets match the fucking, you know, the sham on the bed. Didn't have to have the room at the perfect temperature and the barometric pressure in the room. And Venus was aligned with fucking Pluto. It doesn't matter. It's like, let's go. I am. I am so hot for this guy. It does. That's not a mismatch. Her, her libido was not mismatched with the guy, a hot guy in the foam cannon party. Take that to the fucking bank. But it is with you. Why? Because you're familiar. Because she, you, you'll tolerate that shit. Yeah, I like that. I like it that way. Okay. Well, what happens? 
That guy goes and sees porn and he goes, he knows what he's missing. He goes and he sees porn. He sees women doing reverse cowgirl or whatever the fuck it is. I don't even, I can't even tell. I don't even know what the names of these are. Domo, help me out. <laughs> give me some, no, Tiffany, give me some, I need some, I need some porn vernacular. I don't even know what to call the positions. I've never seen that before in my life. Right. Well, neither is your wife. And she's not about to, she's not about to figure it. She'd figure it out on her own. Um, well, you need to talk. No, you don't need to talk. She should want to do that. She should already figure, hey, you know what? Maybe I'm going to try this with them. Let's go get the Pop Rocks. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Let's go try something new. It, it shouldn't just be the guy initiating either. That's another thing. But when it comes to like married sex, if you want to know why pornography for married guys is so endemic, it's because, especially religious guys, they see what they're missing. Man. These guys are, you can fuck like that. And of course, you know, especially this day and age, most of those guys have already seen this porn before that. He's not getting that in the real. Well, porn gives you unrealistic expectations for sex. You shouldn't really expect to get reverse cowgirl from your, from your wife. Why? Why not? Why not? Like, we're not talking about like sex on the moon. We're just talking about like basic, hey, this seems pretty hot. Let's try this. Why aren't you thinking of this? Why how come? Why do I have to like be the one that initiates and is creative about this shit? Why? Because I can see it in porn and it doesn't seem like it's all that like complex. <laughs> it's because she doesn't want to fuck you. That's why. There's no mismatched libido. She doesn't want to fuck you. There's a there's a blue pill to get your but did you know that there's a pink pill to turn women on? There used to be anyways. It never really took off. It was the pink pill. It was supposed to like help help couples with mismatched libidos. And you know what? It was a dismal failure. The pink pill. Look it up. And not the podcast. <laughs> the pink pill. It was this pill that was supposed to stimulate. It was like, oh, like Spanish fly, right? It was supposed to turn a woman on. It was supposed to get her going, get her, get her rocks off or get her like aroused. And they were marketing it or pitching it to women who would want to, you know, who were having mismatched libidos with their husbands. The problem is nobody wanted to take it because that's not how hypergamy works. It's not a chemical thing. This guy, it's a psychological thing. A woman doesn't get like, there's a reason why women get hot for Jason Momoa. And it has nothing to do with a chemical reaction. <laughs> it's, a, it's the holistic method. <laughs> I need holistic sexual therapy. I don't need the chemical. Um, it, it, Cause that's, that's how it works for women. So in that case, I guess maybe you're correct. You know, men and women are different when it comes to sex, but if you want to, I've had so many guys that I've even done counseling for, and this is also part of the reconstruction series that I put in positive masculinity. Get your fat ass to the gym. Once you start doing that, once you, I will guarantee you this, your, I, I would, I would bet that your sex life will improve. Like it, it proportionally to how well you get yourself in, into shape. You drop, I don't know, most guys, that's usually their problem, by the way, because 75% of the United States population is overweight and 35% of men and 40% of women are morbidly obese or obese in a clinical medical sense, right? Odds are you don't look all that good. Walk through any metro, major metropolitan airport, as I've said before, go from TSA, go to your go to your gate and count how many people you see are overweight. <laughs> Actually, don't do that. Count how many people you see are in shape because <laughs> that's going to be more rare than the people who are overweight, you know, don't dress very well, don't have any style to themselves. Of course you have. Of course, they're sex, sexless marriages because nobody takes care of women, too. Of course, guys are fucking uh, husbands are addicted to addicted or, or have porn habits because they're looking in to what they're missing. Porn shows guys what they're missing. Porn shows Chase and fucking Michael Knowles and all these guys who are like these moralists. It shows them what they're missing. This is what you're missing. You're missing Jasmine Jafar, man. Fuck, look at those. <laughs> from Mia Khalifa man holy crap well she looks kind of like Mia Khalifa that's what I'm missing fuck why would, why doesn't my wife wear those kind of glasses with no lenses in them fuck <laughs> you want the holistic man men are all about the holistic method that's what porn is <laughs> the pink pill dead serious like women wouldn't take it it was a, a it was a flop because women need to have the fantasy. They need to have the story behind it. They need to want to fuck you. 
not to take a pill to want to fuck you. In fact, it was, I think one of the reasons why it got, I don't know if it got banned, but one of the reasons it was very unpopular was because people thought like women, feminists thought that guys were going to use that or slip it in somebody's drink. It wasn't like a roofie where it like knock you out, but it was supposed to in some way like uh, stimulate women's sexual arousal. Well, that's fine. You could certainly make a woman horny. That doesn't mean she's horny for you. <laughs> her, her, her sex drive doesn't work that way. Yeah, you can give her the pink pill and she really wants to suddenly watch Aquaman. I don't know why. <laughs> it's a mystery to me. There are um, and me being a, a student of peptides recently. There's peptides that will like, was it PT 141 will will do almost the same thing for women. It's injectable, right? It's just like a, a peptide. Um, melanotan will do that. I don't know if uh, semaglutide like Ozempic will do. Well, does that do does that? Do female arousal. I'm not really sure. I mean, fuck, you can you could put women on like on gear. There, by the way, there is TRT for women too. <laughs> and oddly enough, they seem to want to their husbands once they get that once once that gets in their bloodstream. It's all it's very very minuscule compared to men, of course. But uh there's peptides, there's TRT, there's women on gear. I hell I've shown a video on here where women uh you know took, you know, uh I don't know, Anavar or some shit like that women's gear and and they get turned on that they want to fuck well they don't they want to fuck they just don't want to fuck you <laughs> there's a selection process there's a selectivity that goes into that 